Picture stumbling upon a building that mimics the delicate beauty of soap bubbles. Fascinating, right? Now, if you are wondering if there is even a structure that resembles soap bubbles, then yes, the inspiration might be weird, but trust me, the outcome isn't. I have always been fascinated by the beauty of nature and what human innovation can do for it. So, without further ado, I would like to talk about one of the biggest biodiversity projects, the largest greenhouse in the world, the Eden Project. What do you think? Can you see the resemblance? Often known as the mystical paradise, this project is no less than a next to impossible one. Why? Watch this video till the end to find out for yourself. The project we are going to talk about today is a breathtaking botanical garden or as I mentioned a mystical paradise. Hi, I am Rajesh and welcome back to Novator where we empower AEC professionals like you by bringing the latest AEC scoop straight from the industry and the experts. And if this is something that hits a chord with you, then take a minute to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. So yes, let's talk about the mystical paradise and the purpose it serves for the environment. Imagine strolling through a lush botanical wonderland surrounded by over a thousand different types of plants and then a canopy walkway where you get treated to a breathtaking view from great heights that will leave you simply in awe. And if we talk about the climate, the biomes, basically the structure that you can see is all about being the perfect home to these thousands of flora. If you step into this biome, you'll find yourself in temperatures ranging from a comfy 18 to balmy 35 degrees Celsius. It's like being transported to the tropical climates of Southeast Asia, West Africa and South America all in one place. It's a humidity packed experience that will make you feel like you have stepped into a whole new world. You know, the first thought that popped into my head when I learned about this place, how can a structure like this even exist? How can it withhold so much when it looks so lightweight in itself? But the Eden project is famous for a lot more than just the design structure. It is the largest greenhouse in the world. Yes, you heard it right. Nestled in the stunning landscape of Cornwall, England, this structure has its own architectural tangent and we are here to give you the dates. So, Chapter 1 The Lost World The Eden Garden is more than just a simple greenhouse, garden or biodiversity park. It's a living testament to the beauty of nature and human innovation. Let me show you a skeleton of this structure. The land this structure resides on was once a clay pit. But the architects behind this masterpiece had better plans for it when they stumbled upon an extraordinary moon landscape that looked a lot like a scene from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's science fiction, The Lost World. Inspired by this sci-fi, architects out there truly believed that somewhere on this planet there is a lost civilization just waiting to be discovered. And instead of just dreaming about it, these visionaries made it a reality. They envisioned and created a world where we can come together and work hand in hand to preserve and respect the environment. And get this, they were aiming to build the world's first ever greenhouse that's big enough to contain an entire rainforest. Now that's what I call a goal. The project was conceived by Tim Smith and Jonathan Ball and designed by Grimshaw Architects along with structural engineering firm Anthony Hunt Associates. Now that we understand the inspiration behind this beauty, let's understand what made them decide upon such a unique design. Chapter 2 The Soap Bubbles and House of Bees The shape of the structure was inspired by soap bubbles. And no, it was not an illogical decision. It is in fact inspired by the same soap bubbles that we used to play in our childhood. You must be wondering why the ground where the project was supposed to be constructed was a china clay pit. Since this clay was very valuable, they were literally digging out the last remnants of the clay. Due to this, the shape of the ground kept changing. Sometimes the level of the ground went up and sometimes it went down. 
That's when it struck the Grimshaw architects. What if they created a structure that simply rested on the side of the pit? Something similar to bubbles. Because the nature of bubbles is that of adjustment, they can adjust according to the shape of the land and even if the ground changed, the shape of the structure wouldn't be majorly impacted. If you really think about it, this is indeed an intelligent piece of design. Also, have you noticed the surface of these bubbles? Well, I should actually call it biome. It looks like a honeycomb. Why do you think such hexagons and pentagons were brought into the picture? And what are they made of? Let me enlighten you. The natural honeycomb design is an effective layout like no other because you naturally get a stronger yet lighter version of any structure when designed in this layout. Moreover, every curve and angle serves a purpose. They are designed in a way that the surface can harness the natural heat retaining properties. This allows the structure to maintain optimal temperatures within the biomes. But one can say that the real magic lies in the biomes covering. Why? Because it is a lightweight translucent material called ethylene tetrafluoroethylene, also popularly known as ETFE. This high tech skin not only allows sunlight to nourish the plants but also traps solar energy, making the project incredibly energy efficient. Sounds fancy, right? Well, it's super strong, transparent, and lightweight, weighing less than 1% of glass with the same volume. Plus, it's a better insulator and more resistant to sunlight's effects. Keeping in sync with the design of the structure, they formed this ETFE material into sturdy pillows with three sheets welded together and air pumped in between the insulation. And get this, these pillows are adjustable. On colder days, they pump them up for better insulation and on hotter days, they can deflate them to cool things down. Now that's some smart work. Thanks to computational design, they were able to figure it out all and create precise 3D models for construction. Now, you can also join this league of the top 1% of architects and engineers who are transforming the AEC industry with their computational design skills. With Novator's Master Computational Design course, that too at one tenth of the cost of a typical master's degree from any university. You are getting global career prospects without even compromising on your current projects at hand. Sounds amazing, right? I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity, so check out the link in the description below right now. Coming back to the topic. Now that we understand the shape and structure of the biomes, let's see how the design was brought to life. Chapter 3 From a Vision to Reality So back in 1995, Tim Smith and Cornish architect Jonathan Ball had the magnificent idea. One can say that the chosen site for Eden was perfect in many ways be it plenty of sunlight, a south-facing slope, and easy accessibility. But it wasn't all smooth sailing from the get-go. First up is the ground material. The pit was mostly clay, which isn't exactly ideal for supporting lush plant life. So before the crew could even think about building the greenhouse, they had to work on the soil to make it rich in nutrients. How did they do it? by mixing the clay waste with composted green waste creating soil that would have taken centuries to develop naturally. But wait, the site was doomed with heavy rains that literally flooded the pit with a whopping 43 million gallons of water. To tackle this, the designers got creative. They built a water collecting pool under the soil along with a system to channel rainwater and run off into this pool. And guess what? They turned this challenge into an opportunity by using the collected water to irrigate the plants and power the building's plumbing. Fast forward to today and Eden is a fully functional greenhouse. The entire site has undergone a miraculous transformation from a bleak brown field to a vibrant heaven bursting with flowers, plants and fruits unlike anything you have seen before. Since opening its doors in 2001, the Eden project has welcomed over 13 million visitors from all over the world, contributing over a whopping 
one billion euros. So from a merry vision to a global phenomenon, the Eden Project has been a testament to what's possible when passion, creativity and environmental stewardship comes together. The Eden Project is more than just greenhouses. It's a hub of education and inspiration. Plus, they regularly host workshops and special events designed to raise awareness about environmental issues. So by now, it must be evident that the project is not just famous for its design, but more for its functionality. One can say that Mother Nature's beauty and creativity are on full display. So far, the project has completed four phases and they are not stopping here. Phase 5, known as the Edge, is in the work with a focus on creating a biome that celebrates the desert regions of the world. How cool is that, right? So the next time you are amazed by a jaw-dropping biodiversity or a breathtaking architectural design, remember there is a touch of computational magic behind it all. While you are there, why not drop some suggestions in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you'd like to see from us next. Oh, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more awesome content from us. And hey, if you are eager to discover the top 5 places to learn computational design worldwide, don't miss out on our latest video. Check it out now. See you in the next one tribe. Until then, let's dare to disrupt.